it's so nice to see you joining us. Well, at least I know one person's join a, joining us. That's Ross. Mm -hmm. Yay, there we are. Um, so, hello and welcome. Um, for those of you that may not know me, my name is Natalie, and I'm a storyteller. And I, I think today I should have been, if not, maybe not today or tomorrow, I should have been at a school doing um, storytelling with Prologue to the Performing Arts. And um, because we are not going to school right now, I thought it would be fun to do a little live stream and uh, just do some stories. And I know a lot of you are, most of us are at home and we can't be at school. So I thought this might be a nice way to um, occupy a little bit of time and maybe do something creative. Oh, Ross is telling me Deb's there. Hi, Deb and Myrna. Hey, Myrna, big heart. And oh my gosh, Karen, Karen. Oh, this is amazing. Karen and I went to school together and uh, that's where I first um, learned about storytelling. And uh, we have Alexis is there and Lee is there. Hi, Lee. Hi, Alexis. So good to see you guys. Um, so yeah, so this week I should have been in a school and as luck would have it, the school I should have been at is the school that is right across the street from my house. So the one day that I would have the easiest commute, uh, but anyway, I guess today is like even an easier commute because I'm like in my living room. So welcome to my living room. Welcome to our home. And uh, we're gonna do some stories and some songs. And um, we'll start with some stories um, for sort of the younger ones. And then we'll um, do some with some uh, stories for the older kids near the end. So let me know if that sounds good. Oh, I see we have, who was it? Jennifer Doria, yay, hi, and Kurt's here. Hi, Isla, hi, William, and Renee, hey, Renee, and Dave, yay, thanks for joining. That's amazing. All right, so I thought we would start with a little bit of a warm up um, because in schools, when I go into the schools, I let people know that yes, I am, of course, a storyteller. But when I tell stories, I don't just stand up here and go, once upon a time, there was a chicken. Of course, when I tell stories, I speak, I tell the story, but when I tell stories, I use so much more than just my voice. I use my hands. I'm French, I talk a lot with my hands um, to express the story. I use my facial expressions to tell the story. And so I thought, Maybe we could do a little bit of a warm up since we're kind of all inside and, you know, maybe not getting out and getting enough exercise these days. So maybe we can start with a little bit of a warm up together. Sounds good? Give me a thumbs up if it sounds good. Yay! Oh, Ross is giving a thumbs up. Okay, good. So let's start uh, nice and easy. Um, start warming up your fingers. And for anyone that's watching who speaks French, we're going to warm up les doigts. You might know this word, les doigts. So let's warm up your fingers a little bit because sometimes you need your fingers to tell stories. And let's warm up our hands a little bit, shake them out. Oh, that feels good actually. I haven't been out today. Warm up your hands. And let's see if you can warm up your elbows because sometimes you might need your elbows. Maybe this story is about a chicken. And let's see if you can warm up Oh, in French, les coudres. I don't know if my cousin Emilie is watching or any of my French family, but les coudres, we can warm up the elbows. And let's see if you can warm up your shoulders a little bit. Maybe you can say, maybe. Can you say that at home? Maybe. maybe. Oh, that's good. And let's see if you can, oh, let's say it in French too. Peut-être. Peut-être. Oh, that's good. And let's see if you can warm up your head. Can you say yes? Yes. Oh, very good. Can you say no? No. Oh, good. Peut-être. Peut-être. Oh, that's good. And let's see if we can warm up our ears, because of course we need our ears, les oreilles, for listening to stories. And of course we need la voix, the voice. Can you help warm up your voice with me? Can you say me, 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 me? Me, 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 me. Oh, that's very good. 
Yeah. And let's see if you can do it in French. Can you say, moi, 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 moi? <laughs> moi, 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 moi. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. <laughs> um, and let's see, last but not least, let's warm up la bouche, the mouth. Let's see if out there you can do the teeniest, tiniest mouth possible. Oh, mm. that's good. Does anybody look like a poisson? Does anyone look like a fish? Maybe you can tell me in the comments. Any parents seeing any fish in your house? <laughs> and let's see if you can do the opposite. Can you do the biggest, widest mouth possible? Oh, I can imagine that there's some ginormous mouths out there. Let's see yours, Ross. Whoa, he's got an enormous mouth. And let's see if you can put your hands up and your hands down, hands up, hands down, spin your fingers round and round and let's start. It goes like this. There once was a wide mouth frog. And that wide mouth frog was very curious. He liked to ask a lot of questions. And one day he was hopping along, looking for someone to talk to, when all of a sudden out in the field, he saw Mama Giraffe. And he looked way up at Mama Giraffe and he said, Mama Giraffe? Mama Giraffe, what do you feed your babies? Mama Giraffe looked down at the wide mouth frog and said, Oh, la petite grenouille, grenouille is frog in French. I feed my babies the most tender leaves from the tops of the most tender trees. And the wide mouth frog said, Why, thank you, Mama Giraffe. And off he went. Well, they kept on going, looking for someone to talk to, looking for someone to talk to. You weren't there, couldn't ask you. When all of a sudden, out in the middle of an orchard, at the top of an apple tree, he found Mama Bird. In French, Mama Oiseau. And he looked way up at that bird and he said, Mama Bird, Mama Bird, what do you feed your babies? Bird looked all the way down. Oh, little wide mouth frog. Oh, you know, I feed my babies the most tender uh, worms under the most tender, juicy shoots of grass. And the wide mouth frog said, Why, thank you, Mama Bird. And off he went. Well, he kept on going, looking for someone to talk to. Looking for someone to talk to. Couldn't find anyone. And then all of a sudden he found a path and that path went winding into the deepest, darkest part of the forest. And it opened up and there he saw an ooey, gooey, muddy swamp. And right there in that swamp, there were two big old eyeballs belonging to Mama Alligator. And the wide mouth frog said, Mama, 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 Mama Alligator. Mama, Mama, Mama Alligator. Uh, what do you feed your babies? Mama Alligator. Look that wide mouth frog up. Look that wide mouth frog down. And said, Oh, <laughs> a little wide mouth. I feed my babies all kinds of things from the swamp, but the thing they like the very most is wide mouth frogs. And the wide mouth frog went like this. No kidding. You don't see very many of those around here, do you? <laughs> and he hopped off as fast as he could. The end. Yay. Yay. Thank you. You guys are great. Were you playing along with me? Oh, we see that Sammy's there. Oh my gosh, Angel's there. Um, Deb and the girls are there. Wow, and my brother Dave is watching. Hey, little brother. <laughs> little big. Little big brother. He's bigger than me now, so I call him LB, little big. Or no, he calls me LB. 
something like that. Um, and oh, Theophil, hi Theophil. Wow, Theophil was a baby when he went to his first concert and that was in, um, oh gosh, where was it? Mississauga Living Arts Center, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mary's there, hi Mary, nice to see you. And um, I think this might be, or may have been back when Theo was young, one of his favorite songs. It might not be anymore because I think he's seven now. Um, but this is one of my favorite um, songs that uh, I wrote about maybe, uh, gosh, five or so years ago. And it all came about because one day I was in my car and as I was driving along, minding my own business, I looked over and on the car window, there was a bee. There was a bee in the car with me. So I rolled down the window and the bee walked up the window. I rolled down the window, the bee walked up the window and just when it was on the edge of the window, I went, shoo, shoo, shoo. Can you do that at home with me? Can you say, shoo, shoo, shoo. But instead of that bee going out of the car, the bee came in the car, started buzzing all around me. I'm trying to drive. The lady in the car next to me said, there's a bee in your car. And I said, I know. And this is what happened. There's a bee, there's a bee. There's a bee in the car with me. I opened up the window and it does not want to go. There's a bee in the car with me. Will you sing with me at home? Do you think you can sing it? There's a bee. There's a bee. There's a bee in the car with me. I open up the window and it does not want to go. Oh, you got it. There's a bee in the car with me. The biggest kid ever is with me. So now there's a bee in the car, and it's buzzing all around, and it's making that sound. There's a bee in the car with me. Uh-oh. And then you wouldn't believe what happened next. I heard this sound. Squeak, squeak. squeak, squeak. Squirrel. It's a squirrel. What do you think it is? Can anyone type in the comments? Do you know uh, what it is? It's a, a raccoon. A small squeak, raccoon. Squeak, Baby. Squeak, squeak, uh, squeak. Do you have it at home? I... There's a mouse. There's a mouse. There's a mouse in the car with me. He's under my seat. Now he's running through my feet. There's a mouse in the car with me. So now what is there? There's a mouse in the car and a be in, in the, the car, car and it's buzzing and all around and it's making that sound. sound. Jennifer Doria got it. Yay, Jennifer Doria. There's, There's a bee in, in the, the car, car with me. me. Uh-oh. And then you wouldn't believe what I heard next. I heard this sound. <laughs> type in the comments what is it did anyone get it now you said it's an elephant no what the heck no, no. <laughs> did you really yeah <laughs> do you have it uh, there's a snake oh sammy got there's it there's a snake way to go sammy there's a snake in the car with me he slid on to the wheel oh i think i'm gonna there's a snake in the car with me. We sing it with me. There's a snake. There's, There's a snake. snake. There's, There's a snake, snake in the car with me. He slid onto the wheel. Oh, I think I'm gonna. Ah! <laughs> There's a snake in the car with me. So now what is there? You got it right. There's a snake in the car and a mouse in the car and a bee in the car and it's buzzing all around and it's making that sound. <laughs> There's a bee in the car with me. <laughs> oh, a lot of people got snakes. So let's see what oh, the next really? one you're gonna get. Okay, let's see if you can get this one because you wouldn't believe it because it just kept on going and all of a sudden I heard crunch. 
and I looked behind me and I saw Wait, do that again. You saw what? I saw Uh oh. What do you think it is? Uh Does anyone know? It's a, a stork. Does anyone know? Um Uh I, Does anyone got it? I don't I don't know. There's a giraffe. A giraffe. A giraffe in the car with me. He poked a hole into my roof, and now my car's not waterproof. Mm. There's a giraffe in the car with me. So now what is there? There's a giraffe in the car, and a snake in the car, and a mouse in the car, and a bee in the car, and it's buzzing all around, and it's making that sound. Mary got the giraffe, so did oh. Heather Whaley. There's a bunch of people. They're on it. Way to go, they Heather. Got it. Way to go. Yep. Mary Rosa got, got it. it. Rosa got Rosa it. Rosa got oh, it. Yeah. Good job. Oh, Susan Ward said a long-necked goose. Oh, that could work. It'd <laughs> have to be a very strong long-necked goose. <laughs> <laughs> so I kept on going, and then you wouldn't believe it. I heard this sound. Maybe now it's the elephant. What? Maybe now it's the elephant. Maybe it's the elephant. Is it the elephant? Uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex? A Tyrannosaurus Rex? Uh, oh no. Does anyone else have any guesses? Myrna says an elephant. An elephant? Good guess, Myrna. But I don't know. Are you trying to do me in putting an elephant in my car? <laughs> Does anyone else have a guess? Oh, oh, I, I've heard before in schools. Well... Somebody was once told me that they thought that it was a, a duck. A duck that a, makes that sound? A chicken. Maybe. I had a chicken. Could be a big chicken. A big chicken. A super chicken. The super chicken. Yes. Myrna says King Kong. King Kong. Oh my gosh. Mm. Myrna, I don't know. That's not going to be good for the end of the story. All right. Okay, let's see if anyone guessed it. There's a hippo. Will you sing nice and low with me? There's a hippo. There's a hippo in the car with me. Now I have to tell you, my car is awfully dinky, and that hippo, oh la la, terribly stinky. There's a hippo in the car with me. So what is there again? There's a hippo in, in the, the car, car and a monkey in, in the car, car and a giraffe in the car and a snake in the car and a mouse in the car and a bee in the car and it's buzzing all around and it's making that sound. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. There's not much room in, in the, the car, car for me. me. And the 
let me show you what this scene looked like. It was like this. I'm smushed against the window and nobody wants to leave. And then I hear this boom, boom, that poor hippo's turning green. Oh no, yelled the monkey, stop the car and stop it quick. That stinky hippopotamus is gonna be sick. Ooh, a car sick hippopotamus? Mm. Uh, that is not good news. Not good. But the good news is, I pulled the car over, the door opened, and now the hippo's out of the car and the monkey's out of the car and the giraffe is out of the car and the snake is out of the car and the mouse is out of the car and the bee is out of the car no more buzzing all around no more making that just for you. Oh, and Florence. Ah, bonjour Florence. Hey, hey, Emily. Oh, Emily, bonjour Emily. Comment ça va? All right, so nice to see everyone here. All right, so I thought we would um, move on to this next story. Has a little bit of French for my French family that's watching. Um, and it's a story that I wrote a few years ago called Mirabelle en coccinelle. So it goes like this. Oh wait, I forgot to ask you. You know the story about the bee? Did anybody guess what part of that story was actually true? Can you guess? Do you um, know? The part of the story that's true, um, 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 the giraffe. Mm. Although you know what, one time I had a little kindergarten boy follow me after the performance and his teacher said you know uh johnny what are you what are you doing where are you going he's like i'm going to see the hole that the elephant that the giraffe made in her car <laughs> <laughs> and this was after the conversation that we had about which part was real and which part was imaginary um hmm. so it was so cute so if you guessed that the part of the story um uh, where i said that the bee was in my car and maybe you guessed that um, the car was real, or maybe you guessed that I was real, or maybe the lady in the car next to me that said, there's a bee in your car. Give yourselves a good pat on the back, you got it right. Mm -hmm. Susan said the bee and the mouse. Oh, the mouse, that's possible actually. When I go into schools and I tell that story, I get a lot of people telling me stories of someone that they knew that had a mouse in their car, and I've actually heard about people that have had a snake in their car. Ooh. So I wouldn't be so happy about that one. Anyway, so um, this is the next story called Mirabelle en coccinelle. And uh, it's a, a good story for those of you who like to imagine that you might have a superpower. All right, it goes like this. Mirabelle en coccinelle had the most beautiful dress made out of, oh, wait a second, hold on, coccinelle. That is a French word. I know that one. Don't tell me. If you know it at home, don't say anything. Coccinelle, coccinelle. I know. She had the most beautiful dress made out of chicken toes. Ew, what? Oh, that's not right, is it? Nah. No. That's not, that's not how, no. Hold on a second. No, that's not right. Coccinelle, coccinelle. Okay, I got it. I got it. Mirabelle en coccinelle had the most beautiful dress made out of, don't tell me. I got this one. Coccinelle, coccinelle. Uh, donkey ears. What? Donkey no. ears? No. No, no, no. That's not right. That's not. That's not right. Hold on a second. Oh, okay. Okay. Does anyone have it at home? Does anyone know what is coccinelle? Does anyone know this word at home? It's not chicken toes. It's not donkey ears. Does anyone have it? I'm sure you have it. Yeah. 
It takes a second for them to... It takes a second. Yeah. Let's find out if anyone's got it. Type it below. Do you remember what is coccinelle? I'm sure someone's got it. I know it. Let's see. Feathers? Oh, that's a good guess. That's Sammy's guess. Oh, that's a good guess, Sammy. That's good. Let's see if anyone got it right. Mirabelle, en coccinelle, had the most beautiful dress made out of... Oh, I got it. I think I remembered it. Does anyone have it? Susan Ward's got it. Oh, what'd she say? Ladybug. The most beautiful dress made out of little decorative buttons of ladybugs. Now, the thing you did not know about this dress is that it held great magical powers. And if Mirabelle did three twirls with her dress, maybe anyone little at home wants to do this with me, we can do three twirls. And maybe we can count two. Ready? One. One. Oh, good. We've got a counter. <laughs> two. two. <gasps> One more. Three. three. Well, with three twirls of that dress, Mirabelle could silence the loudest, the bossiest, the meanest, the most cantankerous teacher. Sorry, teachers out there. Librarian parent, sorry parents, or even principal. Now, I have to tell you, Mirabelle did not use these magical powers often, but there did come a day at her school where she needed it. One day, there was an announcement that there was going to be a big concert at the end of the school year, and anyone could do whatever they like. It would be a talent show. People could do singing and dancing and hip hop and poetry and storytelling. And at the end of the concert, the teacher was assigning one person to do the last lines of the concert. And all of a sudden, the teacher pointed to one little boy in the class named Lucas. Lucas was mortified. He didn't like talking in class, let alone in front of a whole big group of people. He was horrified that he had to do this. And now, the thing is, is that he didn't really have to say anything all that difficult. All he had to say was, ladies and gentlemen, or in French, mesdames et messieurs, thank you and good night. That's not so difficult, is it? Mm -mm. But for poor Lucas, it was terrifying. And what's worse than that? When his father found out that he had to say these lines at the concert, his father said, Lucas, I'm going to make you practice every day and every night and make sure you get it right because I don't want you making a fool out of yourself in front of those people. Well. Do you think that made Lucas less nervous or more nervous? Probably a lot more nervous. And so every night he had to practice his lines and he would try to practice his lines, but every time he would get so nervous, his knees would shake and his shoulders would shake and his whole body would shake and he would try to say the words, ladies and gentlemen, but out of his mouth, would come the words, JDs and Lentilmen. Mm -hmm. And the more his father got annoyed with him, the more he seemed to get it wrong, and the more he got it wrong, the more he would practice, and the more he practiced, the more he would get it wrong. I mean, at one point he was practicing, and instead of saying, thank you and good night, he said, spank you and good night. <laughs> oh, his father was so upset and the more his father got upset the more Lucas got upset and the more he would shake the more he would practice and the more he just couldn't get it right until the day of the concert everyone was gathered in the gym there were teachers and parents and aunts and uncles and grandparents and everyone did their numbers there was singing and dancing and a big you know a cappella number for Ross and uh, you know, hip hop and everything and a story at the very end and then, whose turn was it? Lucas. 
he got ushered right into the middle of the stage, and as he started to look up to try to say his lines, all he could do was shake. His shoulders started shaking. His elbows started shaking. His baby fingers started shaking. His knees were shaking. His whole body was shaking. And all of a sudden he looked up and he saw his father give him this look. And he started shaking more. And so he started to try to get the words out, but the words wouldn't come out. And he tried to force the words out, but the words wouldn't come out. And then all of a sudden he forced the words out and out of his mouth flew the words, ladies and underwear. <laughs> oh my gosh, the entire gym erupted <laughs> in laughter. People were howling and poor Lucas started shrinking. And of course his father started yelling across the gym and so another person started yelling too. And it was just so much chaos and Mirabelle. Well, she saw what was happening to poor Lucas and she had to step in. So she came up near Lucas and she did her first twirl. Can you help me? One. And all of a sudden Mirabelle's mother said, she knew about the dress and its magical power. She said, Mirabelle, don't you? And Mirabelle did her second twirl. Two. Mirabelle's mother said, Mirabelle, you're grounded. And she did her third Whirl. Will you help me? Three. And all of a sudden, the entire gym fell silent. And Mirabelle went up to Lucas, standing beside him for moral support, and said, It's okay, Lucas. You, you can finish now. And so Lucas finally looked up, and he said the last lines of the concert. And with Mirabelle's help, he said, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you and good night. The end. Yay! <laughs> thank, Yay. You. Awesome. thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. You've got some friends on here. you got you got uh, Theophil's friend. Not only oh. Theophil, but Sophie is here oh, too. Oh, hi, Sophie. Thanks uh, for you... joining us. You've got Louis Bichel as well. Oh, hi, Louis. Yeah, I'm down in Boston. Yeah. No, actually down in uh, Tennessee. Oh, they're in Tennessee, right. You're yeah. right. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. And then you've got um, Alison Rutherford and Sydney. She says hi. Oh, Sydney. Yay. I'm going to do a story for you soon. And Bonnie Provan. Oh, hi, Bonnie. You've got Sophie Lasinski. Oh, Sophie's there. Andrea nice Patterson. You. Hi, Andrea. And you should know as well that Jennifer Doria has a pet snake. Oh, all right, just don't let it go in my car, is all I have to tell you. <laughs> all right, so um, we have June Brown, who's online with us. Online, is that how you say it? On the line. On the line. Yeah. On the line. <laughs> um, that's the lingo. And uh, I heard this story from her. She's a fantastic storyteller. If you ever get to see a ch or ever get a chance to see June Brown, you'll have to check her out. She's such a fabulous Toronto storyteller. And she told this story the other day, and I thought it was just so perfect for right now. Um, and it goes like this. Elephant was walking down the road one day, just a mind in his business, singing a little ditty. Dum dilly do, dilly dum, dilly do, dilly dum, dilly do. Maybe sing it with me. Dum dilly do, dilly dum, dilly do, dilly dum, dilly do, dilly dee. And all of a sudden he looked down, and right there on the road was his friend, the hummingbird. Except hummingbird was lying flat on his back with his legs straight up in the air. An elephant looked down and said, "Ooh, hummingbird." Are you okay? And the hummingbird said, Oh yes, elephant, I'm fine, thank you. And the elephant said, Uh, well, well hummingbird, are you ill? And the hummingbird said, Oh no, no elephant, I'm quite fine. I am really, I'm quite fine, I'm not ill. 
And the elephant, still perplexed, said, Well, uh, hummingbird, are you, can you fly? And the hummingbird said, Oh, yes, elephant, I, I, I still can fly. No, yeah, no problem about that. And the elephant was so, so curious and perplexed about this. She said, Well, 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 well what is it that you're doing, uh, hummingbird? And the hummingbird said, well, today uh, I heard that the sky was going to fall, so I'm just trying to hold it up. An elephant thought about this teeny little hummingbird and holding up that great big sky, and he started to laugh. <laughs> and he started to giggle a little bit, and the giggle turned into a snortle and a chuckle and a guflomp and a big full-on elephant laugh that just shook the ground. And he said, well, uh, 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 hummingbird, but you're so tiny. You're the tiniest bird I know. And the sky stretches from horizon to horizon. It is so big. How on earth are you going to hold up the sky? And the little hummingbird said, well, I'm not gonna do it by myself, but I'm just trying my best to, to play my part in case it falls. An elephant thought about this and took a few steps away from hummingbird, got down on his knees and rolled right over. And he put his elephant legs right up in the air with those elephant toes pointing straight to the sky. And he said, well, if you're playing your part, I will play my part too. The end. Yay! <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I know we're all kind of stuck inside these days. And we're all trying to play our part to keep everyone safe. Um, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What kinds of things are you doing to play your part? Are you waving to your neighbor outside to say hello, to cheer up her day? Sometimes playing your part is just maybe putting a smile on someone's face or maybe helping mom with the dishes or I think Isla, who's five years old, I think maybe she vacuumed the entire house. Is that right, Isla? Mm, I think maybe. Am I making that up? I'm mm. not sure. Mm. Or, you know, maybe it's um, doing stuff to just keep yourself calm and do some creative things. Right now, we have so much time outside of school. Um, so we get to do all kinds of amazing creative things. How many of you, I'd love to hear, like, a little, like, heart or something, if you're doing creative things at home, you know, some of our favorite things to do is to play music and to write songs and maybe I could let you in on a little secret of mine. Um, if ever I'm feeling worried about anything or if I'm feeling a little bit bored or I'm not sure what to do, one of my favorite things to do is grab a journal. Um, and I'd love to hear from you out there. Does anybody have a journal? You get I, all sorts of hearts. Oh, Everyone's really? Hearting. Awesome. And Isla is giggling. Oh, Isla, yay. <laughs> I can just imagine you with the big old vacuum cleaner. And so um, since I was a child, um, I have written in journals my entire life since I was probably maybe, oh gosh, I don't know, seven or eight maybe years old. And since that time... I have filled about 80 journals. And so this is, I'll show you, this is one of my recent journals. And I'm always writing down lists, things I'm thinking about, how I might be feeling. I write ideas, like the time that there was a bee in the car, I came home and I wrote that idea down and all of a sudden I heard a, sand, a song that went, there's a bee, there's a bee, there's a bee in the car with me and I wrote it down and then I thought, well, what's next? There's a mouse, there's a mouse. So I'm always writing down ideas 
Anyone out there having like other hearts to show me that you do the same thing? Yeah, Andrea, Andrea Patterson says she does bookbinding. Oh, amazing. That's yeah. great, Andrea. I love bookbinding. And so you can see that sometimes in my journal, I will draw like little like sketches and things. And if we go on trips and stuff, I think this is um, one of my journals from when we were in Germany um, a few years ago. Oh, yeah. So I did some sketches from when we were um, on our travels. So I always love to just write or put down any kinds of ideas because you never know what they'll turn into. Can you come out a little closer? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So like different ideas and Those stuff like great. that. So one thing to do our part right now is to be creative. Can you um, be creative with like math and timetables? Allison wants to know with for Sid to get her to get creative with their math timetables. Sure, why not? Create a game. Create some kind of a game or like Like a, three chickens times two frogs? Three chickens times two frogs, exactly. Equals what? <laughs> <laughs> three chickens times two frogs equals 17 guinea pigs. <laughs> I'm really good with math. Nice. And Sammy says that Hugh is doing his journal these days. Oh, amazing. Yeah. That's great. Way to go, Hugh. Fantastic. So since Ilo was so busy vacuum cleaning the house, <laughs> I thought um, we would do another story. And I think I said that this goes out to Sid. And um, there's a couple other people that I know really, really like this um, story in particular. All right, cool. And Bhavani's here too, and she says Aww. she loves what you're doing. Aww. Great way to keep the kids occupied. And Yay. she shared it, shared it too. Thank so that's cool. Thank you, Bhavani. Thank you so much for sharing it. Yeah. And hopefully keeping parents a little entertained, I hope. And Pamphila Vachon was watching too. Oh, bonjour. That's my cousin. Yay. Have fun. <laughs> Yay. All right. So this is the story, since we're not in school right now, this is the story of how I lost my homework and couldn't hand it in and had to give a big old excuse to my teacher. So how many of you out there have ever had to uh, hand in your homework and have actually lost your homework? Yeah? Oh. Oh, I see a hand. There was a hand. I see a hand. <laughs> and for the teachers out there, I think there might be some teachers out there. Did we see that Lori's watching? Some teachers out there. Maybe yeah. Galen, she's a teacher. Yeah, Michelle Rutherford. Oh, Michelle Rutherford. Have yeah. you ever had a student give you an excuse for why they couldn't hand in their homework? Mm -hmm. Well, for those teachers out there, this was my excuse for why I couldn't hand in my homework. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so sorry, teacher. I was trying to be good. I went to clean my room out like my mama said I should. I lugged that vacuum cleaner up the stairs and down the hall. I got it to my bedroom and I plugged it in the wall and I sucked up my homework. I, I, I sucked up my homework. Maybe you can help me triple time. I, 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 I sucked, sucked up, up my homework. homework. And now my homework is gone. Now the worst part when you did your homework is, I mean, when you lose your homework is that you actually did your homework. You see, I had already done it. I had given it my best. But that mean old noisy vacuum cleaner sucked it off my desk. And it knocked against the fishbowl, and it and I tried to grab the hose, but the vacuum cleaner shook its head, and up, up, up it rose, and I sucked up my goldfish. I, I, I sucked up my goldfish. Will you sing with me? I, 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 I sucked up my goldfish, and now my goldfish is gone. when a vacuum cleaner goes crazy like that? Why, well, tried to run away, but then my heart, it skipped a beat because that vacuum cleaner cord, it wrapped its way around my feet. 
So I called out for my sister, Vanessa. But then right before my eyes, that vacuum cleaner snorted and doubled up in size. And I sucked out my sister. I, 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 I sucked out my sister. We sing with me. I, 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 I sucked out my sister. And now my sister is gone. tried to turn it off but then the vacuum spun and spun and so I ran into the kitchen and I dialed 911. The police arrived in minutes. Oh, I saw the flashing lights but when I opened up the door there was a most horrendous sight because I sucked up the policeman. Hi, 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 I sucked up the policeman. We sing with me. Hi, 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 I sucked up the policeman. And now the policeman is gone. So that's what happened, teachers, while I waited for my mom. And then that vicious vacuum cleaner started heading for my thumb. My mom arrived, well, just in time to see the vacuum roar. And so I ran into the bedroom and I pulled the power cord and I rescued the policeman. Oh, thank you, ma'am. I, I, I rescued my sister. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I, 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 I rescued my goldfish. Gloop, gloop, gloop. But you see, my homework was gone. The end. Yay. Yay! Thank you. Thank awesome. you so much. Myrna said that she loves this one. Oh, thanks, Myrna. And thanks you got people the comments. dialing in. You got Diana Tso. You've got Stephanie Koenig. Hi, and the girls. Hi. Yeah. Hi to some of my favorite people out there. It's so nice to see you here. And so I think we have time for one little bit of a song to end things off. But before we go, um, let me know. Is this something that you would like to see more of? I have more stories. Are there stories that I didn't tell today that you would love to hear? Um, parents, is there... Uh, would it be helpful to do some stories or anything around worry right now? Are any kids feeling a little bit worried about not going to school right now? If so, what I want you to do, one thing that I'd really love you to do right now, um, of course, let me know if that might be something to, to do in the future. And um, um, if you have any yeah, favorite songs or stories, uh, please let me know. Um, but before we go to our last song, oh yeah, and for parents, anyone who might be interested, I'm doing another Facebook Live on Sunday on um, my new Facebook page, which is called Natalie Vachon Emotion Code. And it's some tools and tri um, tricks, not trips, tricks to um, think about how to keep your energy in balance right now. Um, there's a lot going on, so um, I want to share with you this newest um, thing that I've been doing um, called an energy healing modality called the Emotion Code. So if anybody would like to learn a little bit about that, it can also help us with kids, anxiety, things that might be happening um, to just help us stay balanced and grounded right now. Um, so you can message me if you like or look for my new Facebook page called Natalie Vachon Emotion Code. And before we end, I want to do one little thing that we can do if we might be feeling a bit stressed or, or a little bit concerned right now. Ross is going to join me, which is great. I'm going to pass over the guitar. And can everybody give Ross a big hand, Yay! a big applause for helping out and, and making sure that I'm still connected mm, and course. letting me know who's with us. Um, so one thing that you can do if, you know, if you're feeling a little bit anxious is just think of a nice big light, a little like flicker of a candlelight right in the center of your belly. 
And if you're feeling a little bit worried, just think on every breath that you take, I want you to focus on the breath and I want you to think about letting that light be a little bit brighter with every inhale. So let's try it with a nice big inhale. And try and make that light grow a little bit. And let's see if you can do that again and make the light a little bit stronger inside with every inhale. Can you do it? That's good. And let's see if we can make it radiate even bigger with a big inhale. Hmm. And if every, with every exhale, you can just let go of anything you're thinking about or worried or wondering about and just grow that light. Good. And with that in mind, we're going to end with one more song called This Little Light of Mine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine. themselves right now, we can send them a little light. Or if somebody's scared, let's send them light, okay? So it's going to go like this. Send, oh, how does it go again? Uh, oh, yeah. This little light of mine, I'm going to know how to go. Oh, I'm going to send this light around the world. I'm going to let it shine. going to send this light around the world. I'm going to let it shine. Gonna send this light around the world. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let's do that last one and just send as much light out to everyone we can, alright? Yeah. Alright, here we go. Gonna send this light around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Gonna send this light around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Gonna send this light around the world. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Sing that last bit again. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Are you singing along one more time? Let it shine, let it shine. Oh, let it shine. you guys were great thank Yay. you for spending time with us today thank you let me know if you'd like to hear anything else and um, I look forward to reading your comments and seeing who was here sending much love and light to everybody around the world are you gonna do this again if people would like sure I think she should do it again what do you think Yay. put your comments in there because I think she should do it again oh yeah thanks so much everybody love you all have a good afternoon and a great rest of the week. Be safe, be healthy, do everything you can to do your part to keep the light shining. Love you.